This is my Polygon Siskiyou T6e, my e-bike that I didn't love at first. But after months of riding it and getting it super dialed in, it is by far my best feeling bike that I own today. And today, I hope to make it even better. So when I first got this bike, I made a video saying that e-bikes aren't as fun as regular bikes. And that's because it felt sluggish and didn't hold speed well on these flowy jump trails. And it's not because of the motor being governed at 20 miles an hour. Come to find out, thanks to everyone who commented, the gripes that I have with this bike are actually my fault because of the parts that I chose to run, so I think I can improve on that. But with the bike how it is, I've still been having a blast. I just don't do the jump trails. Instead, I play to the bike's strengths, and that's single track and chunk. And let me tell you, this bike rips. Before getting an e-bike, I thought a 55 pound bike would just be too heavy, but I actually really enjoy the weight now. On the chunky section, this bike just plows and it's so planted, it actually gives me a lot of confidence. I actually prefer to hit this kind of trail on the e-bike because I know it just eats these trails up and when the trail starts twisting and turning, the e-bike is amazing at leaning over and I just feel like a maniac ripping single track on this bike. In its stock form, the bike retails for $35.99, one of the best value e-bikes in the market. It's an aluminum frame with 150, 140 millimeters travel, and it has a Shimano EP6 motor with a 504 watt hour battery, so the previous generation motor. At first, I could get like two hours of riding in in trail mode before the battery died, or about an hour in boost mode, but then my friend told me to update the firmware. So I downloaded the Shimano app and updated everything, and it unlocked a bunch more power and more range. So trail mode feels like boost mode now, and boost mode is just too powerful most of the time, and now I can get a solid three hours of moving time. But this bike took a long time to dial in, and it didn't always feel this good, and that was mainly my fault. Obviously, the bike is fully upgraded like I do with most of my bikes. I installed my Zeb Ultimate fork. I reduced the travel down to 150 millimeters, but I did not do it correctly. With the new Debon Air Plus air springs, you gotta put in like one millimeter of oil in between the piston and the seal head. And if you mess it up, you clog the port that allows the positive and the negative air chambers to balance out. And the fork has like no small bump compliance. So I had to take apart the fork and do it all over. And once I did that, the bike suspension felt amazing. And I've been riding this bike about three hours a week since November but some things are starting to wear out. This Maxxis double down tire is almost bald and a whole bunch of the side knobs are ready to just rip right off. And that's fine, tires wear out, they get bald, but I'm told that these double down tires with the thick casings are one of the reasons why my bike feels slow and sluggish on the flowy jump trails. And I guess thick casings have a ton of rolling resistance. I wanna try a different brand. I think there's better tire brands out there. Then I have this bike set up as a mullet. I have a Hunt E-Enduro rear wheel with 35 millimeters internal width. It's a beefy wheel with, and it's been pretty rock solid. And this is my first time using Hunt wheels and I'm pretty impressed with the quality. So I might try out some Hunt wheels for high-low season two, which is coming out in like two weeks. This bike is supposed to be a full 29er. So having it as a mullet has its drawbacks. I pedal strike all the time. And even though the cranks are short, 160 millimeters, I have to be mindful of that while I'm pedaling pretty much nonstop. So I think I, I can't do mullet on this bike. I think it's better if I go back to the full 29 or setup. There are some upgrades that I wanna do, but I'm not gonna get around to it. I would have loved to put a coil shock on this bike. I'm running a Fox Flow X. It's a pretty good shock, but the coil I tried on another build was just so amazing. Then I'd like to try out some longer cranks. I think the 160 millimeter cranks are too short. So when I'm pedaling, it just feels so weird. It just, I don't know, it doesn't feel right. But then again, I'm used to running 180 millimeter cranks on my BMX bike. But I'm not gonna get around to those upgrades because I just got news that the secret prototype e-bike that I was testing, is gonna be done soon. So I'm gonna be switching to that in a few months because that motor is just so powerful and it's a carbon frame, but I've already told you too much. So the upgrade plan today is wheels and tires. And I'm gonna try out these new Elite Wheels NAR Trail 29er. These carbon wheels were just released and made for Trail and XC. And the wheel set weighs 1590 grams. And the rims have this crazy shape with an asymmetric profile claiming to have better lateral stiffness. And the rims are made out of 38 layers of Japanese Torre carbon fiber. And their hubs are the new frequency hubs designed with 320 points of engagement with a super slick gray to black fade. 
And the best thing about these is that they're e-bike rated, so I'm probably gonna save about two pounds using these wheels. Now, I just put out a video reviewing a different set of Elite wheels, the Pro 36, and the comments that you guys left were super polarizing. It was either, I'd never trust Chinese carbon wheels, you could get seriously hurt, or, Oh yeah, I use Elite wheels, they're amazing. I've used them for years. But like I said in the first video, these aren't some no-name AliExpress wheels. Elite wheels come from Xiamen, China, and they have their own R&D team, and they even come with a three-year warranty, and they offer a crash replacement program. So I'm pretty confident in using these. On to the tires. I recently rode with Austin from the Big Outside MTB channel and I showed him around Bentonville. And during our ride, he was ranting and raving about Continental tires. And he actually posted a video from our ride. And uh, I was actually riding a top secret bike that I haven't shown you guys yet. So head over to his channel. I'll have a link in the description if you wanna see what I was riding. But as, I, but as a thank you for showing me around town, Austin sent me a set of Continental tires to try out. These are Continental Zenotals, Zenotals, they're 29 by 2.4 Enduro soft casing, and these are made for hard pack terrain like I have here in Bentonville. These are only about 50 grams lighter than the Maxxis Double Downs, but Austin insisted that I do the Enduro casings rather than the trail casings. But I noticed one thing about these tires. I thought I heard Continental tires were made in Germany, but right here, clear as day, it says made in China. So it's a perfect match. Chinese tires on Chinese wheels. <laughs> Access granted. Of course I'm using Kushcore with these carbon wheels. I learned my lesson before snapping a carbon rim without them. This one is an e-bike specific Kushcore, but I've had several other sets and I'm really impressed with the longevity of Kushcore. Sure, they're expensive, but I've never had to replace one and they look just as good as new. Have you ever had to replace a Kushcore before? This e-bike came with center lock rotors with a speed sensor built in. So when I upgraded it, I had to jerry rig a magnet to fit my six volt rotor. And I even had to grind it down so it didn't contact the frame. I tried riding without it, but the Shimano motor said, nope. Man, my bike stand does not like the weight of this e-bike. It's like going down by itself. But should I remove the tire logos? Nah, just kidding. The Conti logos look pretty cool. All right, made it out to the trail. And right away, I'm feeling like these tires are so soft. I'm running the same pressure as I was before 2022, and these tires are soft, man. But let's go hit one of my favorite trails and see if I, you know, upgraded this bike for the better or if it's, if it's worse. All right, here we go. Oh yeah, these tires are so soft. Tires are amazing. I am so surprised how soft these tires feel. It, it's like a, these tires are a game changer. 
And I can't say that I'm really feeling the wheels yet. The last time when I tried these Elite wheels on my hardtail, I could feel right away that they're pretty harsh. But on a full suspension, I'm not really feeling it yet. But what I am feeling is that the suspension feels a little bit more lively and just this bike feels a little bit more poppy before it was like more planted. And I like that. And I think that's because of the lighter wheels. But let's go ahead to a flow trail to see if maybe this bike got better on the flow trails. And I wanna see if it can still turn well. Here we go. <laughs> yeah. I can't believe these upgrades actually worked. Like going from mullet to 29er, I mean, everybody says mullet's the way to go. And also carbon wheels on an e-bike. I mean, that's just blasphemy, but I mean, this works. It's, it's my favorite bike. I actually might need to adjust the suspension a little bit because it's like almost too poppy now. But hey, I need your opinion. So I got a cameraman for this video. And what do you guys think about the shots? I'm gonna use the cameraman for High Low Season 2, which is gonna be the next video that I put out coming out in two weeks. So let me know your feedback. I'll see you then. <laughs> I'm back.